You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And man, we have a true honor talking to a special, special guest. We're going to talk to ESPN senior writer Howard Bryant, author of Ricky, the life and legend of American original. Man, Brian, you are no stranger to the sports world. You authored many, many books, nine previous books. You also, like I said, senior uh, writer for ESPN and also you're a correspondent for NPR's Weekend Edition. Man, tell us about this amazing book of an amazing athlete. Well, thank you for having me. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this book was really thinking about the time period that we're in. Uh, Ricky is just an incredible player. Ricky is a, a guy that I think was completely underrated. And I think he was one of those players where even in his time, you weren't quite aware of how good he was because people were so fixated on his personality and fixated on his, all his quirks and antics and, and style. But one of the reasons why I wanted to work on it was because it's been such a difficult decade. I write about really difficult, ponderous subjects and really heavy subjects. And from baseball, I had been writing about, I did a book on steroids, and then you're writing about all the labor issues, and then you're writing about Trayvon Martin and Ferguson and Eric Garner and all the, you know, Colin Kaepernick and kneeling and all of this stuff. And after a while, I wasn't sure if I could hear myself. I wanted to go back to do something fun. And it's like, let's let me go back and really think about some of the things that I enjoy about sports, some of the things that I enjoy writing about, why people come to this industry? Why do people love sports so much? And they love sports so much because of people like Ricky, because of these athletes that can do these superhuman things that we just can't keep our eyes off of. And I thought it was, I thought it was good for my, for my soul to get back into this story, a story like this, and also to, to really tell a black story, to tell a story about, about history. One of the things that we always talk about is the great migration. We talk about how the African-Americans got to Chicago and Detroit and Philadelphia and New York and all of the other places. But we never talk about the great migration in sports, how the great migration was, how sports was affected by it. And when you look at the Bay Area, we always talk about the unbelievable amount of talent that came from the Bay. Bill Russell, Frank Robinson, Ricky Henderson, Dave Stewart, Lloyd Mosby, Paul Silas, so many players. But we never talk about where they came from and how they got there. And so part of this book is really all about that migration as well, about the Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas migration to, to Oakland and the incredible amount of athletic and musical talent that it spawned. And also in the book, when you talk about Ricky Henderson, we know that he's had an amazing career uh, from 19... 19- 79 to 2003, he played with 24 season major league baseball teams with nine different teams. But you also talk about some of his struggles and some of the things that he had to overcome, some setbacks, and it involves with education and also just him as a person just beating the odds. Yeah, no question. And I think that one of the things that Ricky was talking about, and some of the other black players in there in the in the book talk about it as well, about when you have that much athletic ability. They just sort of push you through school because you're such a great athlete. And Ricky pretty much said it. He had an undiagnosed reading disability and and understood the fine line between people laughing at him and laughing with him, which is one of the reasons why he was so suspicious of media. It couldn't tell if they were making fun of him all the time. And when he assumed that they did, he withdrew. I think that the the thing about Ricky as well and all those athletes and Ricky, Ricky said it to me best where he said, if it was game day, it didn't matter if we had a test. They just said, go on and play, go score the touchdowns, go. And this is high school. It's a familiar story, but it is something that that the players recognize as well. And at the same time, we then criticize the athletes for not being as educated as they need to be. But there's a system in place that values their physical ability over their mental abilities. Once again, talking to one and only Howard Bryant and... Also in the book, we know that he was inducted in the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2009. And he also is technically not officially retired from baseball. So what's some of the fun (laughs) facts of his mindset as you were able to dig in deeper in his life? 
Well, Ricky never quit. Ricky still believes he could play. Ricky probably believes he can play today. He's going to be, what, 64 this year? And so it's fascinating that he he didn't retire. He he kept trying to play. And one of the things that I enjoyed most about him was this pure confidence in his ability. And I don't know, some of the, the special people have it. The rest of us, we doubt ourselves. We wonder what we can do. We're never quite sure if we're what we think we are. Ricky from day one knew he was absolutely special. Ricky knew he was so good that when the high school, when his high school coach sent him to the junior varsity in the 10th grade, he looked at the coach and said, you must not know who I am as a 15 year old. And so it just tells you how supremely confident Ricky said that he believed he was born to play Major League Baseball and that he knew he had world-class baseball talent when he was like in the sixth or seventh grade. I mean, that just doesn't happen where you think that you can... I mean, a lot of us talk like that, but for him to do it, very, very different story. Ricky is also known having the habit of shouting a famous, it's Ricky time. (laughs) When you know about that, I mean, how effective was his personality on and off the uh, field? Well, I mean, Ricky knew what he could do, and and it rubbed some players the wrong way. But the thing about Ricky, I was talking to one of his teammates, Terry Steinbach, the catcher with the A's, who said, you just had to see it to believe it, that you can't just go out there and announce you're going to have a great game. Baseball's too hard to do that, but Ricky could do it. Ricky could do things that people just hadn't, you know, you come out and there was one time Terry remembered that Ricky was late for the game and the star, you know, the national anthem was playing and Ricky's still in, he's not even dressed yet. He's still just getting prepared for the game while the anthem is going and he's up in like five minutes and just, you know, casually puts his cleats on, goes downstairs and hits a leadoff home run. And it's just those types of things where we all marvel at what he can do and the style in which he did it made people gravitate toward him and made him really special. And it's one of the reasons why people still talk about him. You think about the stuff that he did and the way that he did it is never going to be broken. And it's just his records will not be broken. There's, there's no, there's no pathway that I can see right now where somebody is going to get 3000 hits, 2000 walks, 2000 runs and a thousand stolen bases. And even if they got a thousand stolen bases, Ricky's got 400 more than that. That's how good he was. Once again, it's the true on this morning, talking to ESPN senior writer Howard Bryant, author of Ricky, The Life and Legend of an American Original. Man, all the sports fans, I hope you go check this out and also support what Howard Bryant does. True legend in his own right, what he contributes to the sports world. I want to say thank you, sir. Take your time, your busy schedule, talking to us today, man. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I Am Refocus Radio is brought to you by FOO 4 Star and Holy Crab. FOO 4 Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try. You won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.